in this video i am going to discuss how to obtain all symmetry operators with point group from its swain flies notation i'll use the technique of stereographic projection in such projection diagrams the xy plane is taken to be on the plane of the paper and it is indicated by a dotted circle if the xy plane does not act as a plane of symmetry and if this plane acts as a plane of symmetry that is if xy plane is the sigma h plane then it is indicated by a uh, circle like this now the z axis is taken to be the principal axis of the object projection of a point p on this uh, xy plane is indicated by dropping a perpendicular from the point on this plane if the point is above the plane of the paper then its projection on the plane is indicated by a plus sign like this and if the point is below the plane of the paper then its projection on the on the plane will be indicated by a hollow small circle like this principal c and axis is taken to be along the z axis now uh, let us see the notations used for principal c and axis and improper axis a principal c2 axis two fold rotation axis is denoted by a small oval like this at the center of the xy plane that is at the center of that circle if uh, there is a principal c3 axis it is denoted by a triangle at the center c4 is indicated by a quadrangle a c5 by a pentagon c6 by a hexagon and so on in proper axis s4 axis is indicated by a square in which a dark oval is embedded similarly s S6 axis is indicated by a hexagon in which a dark triangle is embedded. These are notations usually used in stereographic projections. Now let us start with a uh, with the smallest possible group. Let us start with the C2 point group C2. It has it has identity element and a c2 axis from this swain flies notation these two are indicated uh, we indicate the horizontal plane in this way because there is no there is no horizontal symmetry plane the xy plane this is the xy plane and c2 axis will be denoted by this suppose there is a point p above the plane of the paper its projection on the on the plane of the paper will be somewhere here indicated by this notation because actual point is above the plane, plane of the paper and when this is when the when the operator e is applied it remains here and when the operator c2 is applied it turns the actual point turns to an angle of 180 comes at somewhere here and then when it is projected it will go to a plus somewhere like this by 180 rotation about the z axis this is the c2 axis along the z axis like this this is the z axis this is the z axis perpendicular to the plane of the paper and a c2 rotation will bring this plus to this position actual point will be turned and its projection will be indicated by plus this is a complete diagram stereographic projection for the c2 point group because no other operation is possible if we go on turn if we go carry out a further c2 rotation it will come here further c2 rotation will bring it here so these two points will be coming up again and again if we carry out these two operations again and again so the operators are identity and 
C2, C2 about Z axis. And this is the stereographic projection for a C2 point group. Now, suppose we are adding, suppose we are adding a C2 primed axis perpendicular to the C2 axis. Perpendicular to Z axis, we add a C2 primed axis. What will happen? What will happen? Uh, the diagram will be like this. This is the XY plane. This is the XY plane. C2 axis is here. The, uh, the original points were here, points of the C2 group, point group, were here and we are now adding a C2 primed axis, that is an axis perpendicular to the Z axis, principal C2 axis. Suppose, the, the, suppose we are taking it in this manner. Considering a, a C2 axis perpendicular to Z axis and lying on the XY plane. We, we call it C2 primed axis or it, we may call it, we may take this axis to be the Y axis then it, it may be called C2 Y axis also. Uh, we indicate this because this is twofold we indicate this by the ovals at the two ends. Ovals at two ends and uh, connected by a dotted straight line will indicate twofold axis on the equatorial plane, on the horizontal xy plane. Now, for C2 we had these two operators, identity and C2 z. We are now adding a C2 prime operator. So what will happen? We have to apply C2 prime on E that will give C2 prime and what will be the result of C2 primed operation on the point P plus. Suppose this is named P. We indicate this by P plus. If we apply this operation on this, what will happen? What will happen? The, the point P which is above the plane of the paper will be rotated about the y-axis through an angle of 120. How does it happen? Suppose this is your y-axis. This pen, blue pen, is your y-axis. And suppose the actual point is is at the uh, at the tip of the pencil. Then after turning through 180, where will it go? It will go to a point somewhere here. The tip of the pen, pencil, after 180 rotation about the y-axis, will come to a point somewhere here. So from right, from the right-hand side of the y-axis, it goes to the left-hand side. Moreover, from, uh, from a position above the plane of the paper, it goes to a position below the plane of the paper. From right to left and from above the plane to a position below the plane. This will be the final position of the point P. And when it will be projected to the, uh, the XY plane, what will happen? That will be indicated the project. So this projection will come to the left from right to left and that will be indicated by a hollow circle because the actual point from above the plane goes to a position below the plane of the paper by a rotation about this axis. So this C2P plus will give you a new point Q, Q hollow, which is indicated by this Q hollow. And now if you carry out C2 primed uh, C, C, C2 Z first on P plus and then C2 primed. Then C2 primed. What will be the result? 
because we have to multiply this new operator with the previous ones. Uh, because we have to ensure that closer property is satisfied. We can uh, we have to multiply C to Z with C to prime. This means that C to Z is operated on P plus first and then C to prime operation. What will be the result? This is this will be equal to what? On C to prime rotation, P comes to this position. Suppose this is R and it remains above the plane of the paper by C to, C to Z rotation. So we, we get C2 primed R plus from these two. And next, this point is rotated by about the Y axis through an angle of 180. Just as here it came from right to left and went below, this will, by rotation about this axis, go to a position from left to right and it will go below the plane of the paper and its projection will be indicated by a hollow circle. This new point, suppose it is named S. S, S hollow is generated. And how do we come, how do we come to this S hollow point from point, from the initial point P? If we want to come from this to this, then we have to uh, rotate this about about another axis from from the from from above the plane. It has to go to, to a position below the plane of the paper. Therefore, we need another axis like this stretched in this manner. Then, by a rotation, it will come here. Therefore, we need another two-fold rotation axis. Thus, introduction of this axis necessitates another two-fold axis perpendicular to it, another C2 primed axis. If, if this is C2 primed 1, then this is C2 primed 2. And in fact, this is the C2 x axis. If this is C2 y, if we call this C2 y, then this is C2 x. Z is perpendicular to this plane, this is x-axis and this is y-axis. This is the xy plane. And uh, now we, have, uh, we see that another another operation is generated. If this is C2 primed 1, then C2 primed 2 is generated. So we have now to multiply this with the previous ones. What is C2 primed 2, C2 primed 1, what is this? If we multiply this, C2 primed 2, C2 primed 1 on P plus. The initial point is denoted by P plus. C2 primed 1 on P plus gives you Q hollow. So C2 primed 2, Q hollow. What is that? Q hollow is this. C2 prime 2 means that you have to rotate it about this C2 prime 2 axis, that about the x axis. This rotation will bring it, bring you from Q hollow to R plus. Uh, from that side to this, by 180 rotation about this axis, it will come from this position to this position. So the result will be R plus. And how do you come from P plus to R plus? From above the plane to a position above the plane, to a new position above the plane. So uh, you have to you have to turn about the z-axis. Then P plus will, will bring you to R plus. So this is C to Z about, about the z-axis on P plus. Therefore, this product is actually C to Z. So, no new new operation is generated. This is C to Z. C to Z was initially there. We will find that no further new operation will be generated. And, and so, there are the, these four uh, operation, uh, symmetry operators will constitute a group 
those are property will be satisfied take any two of them uh, take any two of them multiply here we have multiplied these two we have got uh, we have got uh, this one c2 primed 2 on p plus so these are the four uh, operators of a new uh, group with a stereographic projection like this this is this group is called d2 group one c2 one uh, identity then one c2 axis c2 z then c2 x these are these are L symmetry elements i'm not writing the hats when we are writing the symmetry elements c2 y these four symmetry elements are there and these symmetry operators are possible this is a complete d2 group this is the stereographic projection written in a, a we can uh, usually a neat diagram you will find in books for d2 a neat diagram like this this is a stereographic projection for d2 and using this diagram you can uh, verify that uh, these operators any two operators of this group will commute and by carrying out similarity transformation you will find that each operator in this group belong to its own class every operator constitutes one single conjugate class I will discuss more about such diagrams for other point groups in my uh, next videos. Thank you very much for, for watching the video.